Hey guys, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, we are going to be talking about magnetic forces. By the end of this video, you will be able to determine the strength and direction of a magnetic force. This should say force, not field. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to be talking about primarily is the magnetic force between a wire and a bar magnet. Um, so we'll be talking about kind of the effects of existing magnetic fields on wires. And what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw the magnetic field of my bar magnet. And that's going to, of course, go out of my north pole and into my south pole. So let's go ahead and draw some field lines for that. Now, the magnetic force between a wire and a bar magnet is actually going to also be found during using some, the right hand rule, but it's a different right hand rule from the one that you learned before. So you might be wondering, why is there a disembodied arm in the corner of Ms. Gosling's screen? That is because instead of using a fist, th like with a thumbs up, to figure out the direction of magnetic force between a wire and a bar magnet, what we're going to use is we are going to use our fingers, our thumb, and our palm. So the fingers of my hand, I am going to line up with the magnetic field. And I like to remember that by thinking about my field, my magnetic field is a bunch of lines, just like I have a bunch of fingers. My thumb, on the other hand, is going to get lined up with my current. Now, if I have a single charge moving, so if I have, for example, a proton moving through an electric field, then my thumb is going to point in the same direction as that proton. Now, of course, if I have a thumb, if I have an electron moving in my, in my magnetic field, we're going to have to flip the direction of my thumb to point in the opposite direction of my electron, but we're not going to worry too much about that right now. And I see here, I've wrote, written field on the palm, because I didn't want to write it all over the fingers, but I really do need to write field on the finger there. Um, and the reason for that is that the palm, the, the, the palm is going to be pointing towards your uh, magnetic force. So field, current, and force. So in this situation, you can see my field is pointing to the left, my current is going up, and my force is coming out of the page on this hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and line the hand up to match the situation I have in my problem. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this hand up and you can see if I line it up in the direction of the field with my fingers and the current with my thumb, the palm is pointing up. So my force is actually going to be coming out of the page. So the way that I'll represent my magnetic force here in green is with dots to represent that it is coming out of the page. So this is the direction of the magnetic force on my wire. Okay, so I know the direction of the force on my wire, but I also need to know the magnitude, the amount of force. And that equation is, that is gonna be found using the equations on the page that you can see. So F is of course going to be my force, and B is going to be my magnetic field. And we are going to usually measure the magnetic field in a unit called the Tesla. So that's going to be the SI unit for magnetic field. Next, we have another symbol that you are probably used to, and that is, of course, I, which is going to stand for current. Now, we know that force, the, the magnetic force, um, or the magnetic fields act on currents. So they they um, cause currents to feel forces. But one thing that you, we maybe haven't really talked about is how the magnitude of that force depends on how much wire is in the field. So L is going to be the length of wire that is in the magnetic field. Next, we have another version of this equation. So say instead of having a wire going through a field, we have a single charge going through a field. So an electron or a, an alpha particle, which has a, a plus two charge, or there's all kinds of different charge particles we could talk about. So we could talk about like an oxygen ion. Um, with its two, negative two charge. Um, so if we have a single charge going through a field, what we're going to do is we're going to say that instead of a, a current, we have a charge moving at a speed. So instead of current, we'll talk about Q, which is going to be the magnitude of the charge. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write that in yellow as well, since it's not really, it's more similar to the length of wire than it is to the current. So charge. And then we have V, which is the speed 
of the charge. So how quickly that charge is moving is going to affect the force that it feels. So these are two ways of representing magnetic forces, IL times B or QV times B. You may be, the, uh, the observative among you may have noticed, there's one thing I didn't talk about yet, and that is this here, this perpendicular sign. So one thing that's important to know is that the only part of the magnetic field that will cause a force to be felt by a wire is the part that is perpendicular to that wire. So what that means is if I have a magnetic field like so, and I've got a wire lying through that field, or I have a charge traveling through that field at say a 45 degree angle, the only part of the field that I care about is the part that is perpendicular to my, my current or my charge's motion. So I only care about the vertical part of my, um, of my um, magnetic field. So one, or well, I guess in this case, really it's the horizontal part of the magnetic field, the vertical part of the current. Um, but in any event, if we have a field that is not perpendicular to, my, to our wire, we can actually figure out the portion of our field that is perpendicular to the wire or to the, the uh, charge's motion. And so we can write that force is equal to ILB sine theta or QVB sine theta, where theta is the angle between the current and the field. So if you have an angled current, the really the takeaway here, guys, is if you don't have an angled current, you don't have to worry about that perpendicular sign. Um, but if you do, you do need to use that sine theta. Um, and one important thing that comes that you can see that comes out of that is the sine of 180 degrees, or the sine of pi, is going to be zero, um, as is the sine of zero and the sine of 360. Um, so what that means is that if our wire is parallel, so if I is I or V is parallel to B, then the force is zero. And so that whole, everything that we were talking about earlier about how um, magnetic forces are always perpendicular to both field lines and wires, we can actually see in the equation for magnetic force. So let's go ahead and do a couple of problems. Example one, a straight wire of length 55 meters, or sorry, 0.55 meters, carries a current of 40 amps. The wire is at right angles to a magnetic field of strength 0.046 Tesla. Calculate the force on the wire. I'm gonna go ahead and start by drawing a picture. So we've got our magnetic field. I'm gonna go ahead and make that blue. Um, and that has a strength of 0.046 T. Then I have my wire going through my field that has a length of 0 0.55 and a current of 40A, 40 amps. And we know the wire is at right angles to the magnetic field, so that means that it is perpendicular to the field and we can use the nice simple equation instead of our angled equation. What we're trying to do is calculate that force on the wire. So I've already listed out my givens in my picture, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that step. And my unknown is going to be force. So what I'm going to use, do is I'm going to go ahead and find the correct equation. Knowing that I have a current and a length of wire tells me that my equation is going to be force equals I L B. Now, I know I'm going to use the equation that has I L instead of Q V because I have a current I have a, a current carrying wire versus a single moving charge. And then I know that I can use the simplified equation because my wire is at a right angle to my magnetic field. So I don't have to worry about sines and cosines and thetas and any of that. Now I could, and I could say sine 90, but the sine of 90 degrees is one. So that'd be saying ILB times one. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. Now let's plug in some numbers. So my force, is equal to my current, which is 40, times the length of my wire in the magnetic field, which is 0.55 meters, times the strength of the magnetic field itself, 
which is 0.046 Tesla. And from here, it's a simple solution. I just have to multiply my three numbers together. And when I do so, what I will get is that my force is approximately one Newton, or perhaps more accurately with sig fix, 1.0 Newtons. Um, we're gonna assume this is supposed to be two sig figs. If you wanted to, you could also say one and assume this is one sig fig. It's always complicated when you have a number like 40 or 100 or something like that. And you're gonna leave it as force is one, sig is one Newton for now. So that's a nice simple example. Let's do a slightly more complicated one. Example two, the straight wire lies in a uniform magnetic field as shown. The current in the wire is I, and the wire is set at an angle theta to the magnetic field. The force per unit length on the conductor is F. Determine the magnetic field strength. So we got a lot going on here. So what we have um, is this is a nice problem without any numbers. These are important to have to get some practice with. So the current in the wire is I, and the angle is theta to that magnetic field. The force per unit length on the conductor is F. So force per unit length, F. And we need to figure out the magnetic field strength, or B. So one thing that I forgot to add in here is actually the angle between the magnetic field and the current. So this is where theta is, and that's important to know. So let's go ahead and get this, get this done. Let's figure this out. So my givens are as follows. So given I, my current is I, theta is just theta, and force over L is given by F. My unknown is of course going to be B, my magnetic field strength. And the equation that I'm going to want to use is I am going to want to use the equation F equals I L B sine theta or F over L equals I B sine theta. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna erase that stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue solving for B. So what I'll get is that B is equal to F over I L sine theta, or B is equal to this F here, F over I sine theta. Um, and the reason I can replace F over L with just F is because our problem defines the force per unit length, or F over L, as F. Um, so here is the magnetic field strength of this field over, over pictured on the left. So there you go. You know now how to quantitatively solve for magnetic field, uh, a magnetic force. Now, we did not do any problems that talked about using that right-hand rule. Um, that is something you are going to want to practice with. I, can, I uh, don't love trying to show it on the video just because it's really hard to get a hand that I can move in every way that I need to without filming my own hand. And I don't have a camera that's very good at doing that. Um, so you're gonna wanna get a little practice of that on your own. Keep it, I will warn you, sometimes doing that right hand rule um, requires some rather painful twisting of your wrist. So do please be careful when you're solving those problems. So lots of takeaways. So first of all, magnetic forces are always perpendicular to both the current and the field. And you can see that in the right hand rule. Our fields and our current are perpendicular to one another. So one is perhaps in the X direction and the other in the Y direction. And the magnetic force is perpendicular to both of them. So all of these problems are inherently three dimensional, which is not something we've had to do too much with. Second, only the perpendicular components of magnetic fields act on currents. So we don't care about any of the parallel parts of magnetic fields. We always have to find the part that is perpendicular to my wire. And finally, the equation for finding magnetic for forces is ILB perpendicular or V times Q times V perpendicular. And we can of course replace V per B perpendicular with B sine theta. And there you have it guys. You now know how to find magnetic forces. Go out and give it your best shot. Best of luck and happy solving.